Assalamu alaikum and uh, good morning everyone. Uh, today we will have three sessions. One of them is seeds of leadership. Second will be the root causes of problem. Third one will be why we have extremism in radical. Let us start with the first one, which is the fifth session since yesterday. And this was a comment which I made last year. Actually, it has got seven or eight points. First point is how did the idea of the start in Islamic belief came to be? An idea sometimes is something that you can think about or something can come to you as a gift from Allah. Quite often people when they think they create an idea. Very few people Allah gives them the idea in a dream, in a vision or an action. So idea is like a structure. You look at it, if you are an engineer, like a building, has a foundation, has pillars, has certain uh, roots, certain, what you call it, uh, uh, flows. And the more you serve the idea, the more the building will be growing up. The less serving the idea, the, the, the idea will become an annex or one story building. So the idea of Islamic belief came after three visits we made, or I made, in 1980, not, not three visits, three incidents. First one, the conflict happened in Syria in February 1982. It was an eye-opening conflict between the government and the people in Hama. Second point came when we saw the massacre of the Palestinian in Sabra and Shatila camp in Lebanon, in Beirut with another wake up call the third incident happened to me was my visit to Bosnia because at that time it was Yugoslavia and I was spending a holiday I said why don't I go back or when I come back stay for a few days in, a, uh, in Europe in a place where there's Muslims so when you look at the map, it was only Yugoslavia and it was only Bosnia. On the way back from Egypt, I came to Belgrade, then Zagreb, then Sarajevo. In Sarajevo, I met a lot of young Arab students at that time, from Palestine, from different countries, studying there. And they told me about how the communists struck socialist government is treating Muslims. And one of the Muslims who were present was the late president Alia Eza Begovic. These three incidents created the idea of Islamic belief without my knowledge. 1983 there was a famine in Ethiopia in a place called Eritrea, Eritrea and we found that no Muslim charity in UK is helping the people. All the non-Muslims are doing great work and so we said, why don't we start think about it? Especially after I visited Sudan in December 1983. I came back with an idea, the idea now is structured. You have got Bosnia visit, you have got Sabra and Shatila massacre, you have got uh, the conflict in uh, Haman, and you have got the fourth one, which is the famine in Eritrea. Those four pillars were the foundation of the idea of Islamic belief. As I said, idea is a structure. So when I came back, I sat down with one of my colleagues, who was studying his PhD in chemistry, and he said, let us do something for those people. Everybody in the Muslim community was just very busy with Afghanistan, Afghanistan. I said, okay, fine. You go and help Afghanistan. 
we are going to help the poor people who have the famine. So Ihsan and I started to uh, write something, an open bank account, very simple. At that time it was very easy to open bank account. Even the name of the bank account was very stupidly long. Extremely long. This was in January 1984. And we started to work with the plastic bag, with the ladies, my wife used to type, you know, typewriter, on, on, the, mm. on the typewriter. Mm. We used to make the appeal and print it, photocopy it, and distribute it. We used to go from shop to shop, door to door, house to house, mosque to mosque. This is how we started in January 1984. You consider the idea as a seed. If you don't look after it and put in the right soil, the right fertile soil, and provide the seed and the soil with nourishment, with water, and you keep standing still to protect the seed, when it became vegetation, it will never have a fruitful tree. This is how we started. Uh, that's why the first five years of Islamic Reef was in UK, going from town to town, city to city, mosque to mosque, shop to shop, for five years to introduce Islamic Reef to the community. Five years. Five. If you want a mango tree, mm -hmm. if you want a banana tree, different from mango tree. Mm -hmm. Banana tree, one season. Mango tree stay for about 20, 30, 40 years. If you, don't, if you want date tree, if you want oak tree or mahogany tree, it took about 30, 40 years. Depends on the wood that you want. With, with banana and with bamboo and with sugar cane. Sugar cane, just one season. You cannot have a trunk because you suck the juice and spit it out. With uh, bamboo, you can make some chairs like this. But with mahogany and oak tree, you can make furniture, you can make foundation. It depends what kind of tree you're going to plant, what kind of seed you have, you need to look after it. And there are some trees in Japan and different places live for hundreds of years. The longer the life of the tree, the more stable and strong the furniture that you're going, or the wood that you're going to get from the tree. This is how it started. The second question is, what are the turning points in your relief, in your life, that led you to do what you are doing? Turning points in my life, first one is my first journey with my father to go to Libya in 1966. He was appointed to the Ministry of uh, Islamic Affairs and I accompanied him because uh, I wanted to get a high marks to go to the medical school. Mm -hmm. So I traveled for, with him for the first time by car from Cairo to Benghazi, 24 hours journey. It's my first turning point to see the outside world. The outside world for me at that time was Libya. The second turning point in my life, I had a love story, like all of you. And I was supposed to be marrying someone who was very decent from a good family. And I was in the third year of medical school. And I was told by the family of my uh, proposed fiancé to come and propose her. My mother was against that, because I was still in the third year, so about two or three years, to the mother, because when I go to the house, at least I am the fiancé, not I am uh, whatever, I don't have a title. She said, okay, this is against my will. My mother went there, and she was told by the family, sorry, let your son finish the medical school first and come back. My mother came back very upset. At the age of 21, 22, I have to take a very painful decision of saying enough is enough and I cut the relationship. The girl has nothing to do with the decision. 
My mother told me, I told you. He didn't listen to me. And she came in a very uh, somber or upsetting. It was second turning point. The third turning point, which she kept having difficult decision, actually, to uh, grow, is my decision to go to uh, UK to study. I had a proposal from a friend of the family to give me a job in Saudi Arabia. I went to my father. He said, my son, it's better to go and study and get a degree than going to get some job, to get some money. Because in the year before, this was actually 1976, I went for a holiday to UK to know what's the culture there. Then I came back and after I finished my internship, the decision came and my brother's advice said, don't go to the Saudi to make money, go to UK to learn. This was the most painful journey in my life because on the plane, I thought that I'm not going to come back to Egypt. And this vision came to me that is, oh, I finished, you are going out. So I was in tears for the three and a half hours or four hours in the plane. This is the third turning point. The fourth turning point is leaving the medical field and uh, being full-time worker with Islamic League. This was 1995. As I told you yesterday, uh, I went to Egypt for 1989 and came back and so on. This was after I succeeded in obtaining my doctor of medicine in fetal pathology. The time has come, 1995, after Bosnia war, after the first church, said, enough, enough for medicine. That said, divorce and be full-time worker for Islamic League. So, full-time worker of Islamic League from 1995. The turning point after that came in 2008. I was in 2008, how old I was, I was 58 years old. It became a time that actually I had 24 years of humanitarian work. Water, sanitation, health, education, relief, said, enough is enough. But when I became president in 2003, I was overexposed to the outside world, conferences, meetings, workshops, talks, advocacy, research, and other, said Islamic Leaf cannot fulfill all this. Because Islamic Leaf is operational organization. So I decided to quit, but Islamic Leaf gave me the chance to create Muslim Child's Forum while I was in Islamic Leaf as a president, then humanitarian forum when I was a the president of Islamic Leaf. So I came out from Islamic Leaf taking these two organizations with me. But another painful decision is to leave Islamic Leaf. So that's 2008. Do Islamic Leaf do something else which Islamic Leaf cannot do it? Of course, the donation, networking, communication has to be done by specialized organization. This was 19, uh, 2008. The other difficult decision came later on because I was a chair person of many boards of Islamic League, like South Africa, like TIC International, like Malaysia, like USA, like Canada, what else? Anyway, is to step down from all this. So I stepped down from South Africa, I stepped down from TIC which is a recycling company. I stepped down from Malaysia. I stepped down from uh, Canada last year. And I still holding my chairmanship in one office, which is Switzerland. Okay. So I stepped down from America as well, because I was the chairman of America, yes. Why Switzerland? Then? Why are you saying with Switzerland and not in other countries? Because in the annual general, in the general assembly, it should be one 
each individual member should be a member of one board okay. they, they, they should not have multiple representation mm -hmm. should not be the, in, in Canada and America so you should choose a board so last year I had a choice between Canada which are dealing 80 million dollars and Switzerland I said okay Canada is stable let me stay with Switzerland these are difficult decisions you make. You know, from the age of 16, which is 1966, till now, the story is a never ending story. If this is enough, no. Because in this journey, you have to find a new role for you. Every time you keep walking, you learn, you see, you listen, you read, you change to make that change. If you don't read, learn, listen, advise, you cannot make the change. And if you don't keep going either deep into the depths of the ground or forward to different countries, you cannot make the change because you cannot see what the other people are doing. So from the age of 16, which is 6'6", six, six, till today, it took about 34, 57 years. You see, it's addressing the second point, which are all of them are turning points. From the first journey to Libya, to my love story, Two, 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 two. And the life still goes on. So don't stop. Learning, listening, reading, traveling to make that change. The third point in this seat of leadership, what kind of support helped you deal with the challenges along the way? The first most important support came from my mother. She always, she was a community worker. In our house, my father was a theologian, was a professor of Islamic Sharia in the University of Azhar. My mother was a community worker and was a member of one of the political parties. So she was the one who bring everybody, like uh, the one who, like you, you want to get married, she can find you a, a, a wife. Or if you're a girl, I can find you a husband. You want a husband or a wife? <laughs> and, and so if somebody is in, in, in being divorced, she has to get the advice, all this kind of thing. Mm. So she always was telling me, mix with the people who are less than you, mm. to feel that Allah has given you a better life. So we thank Allah. Don't mix with the people who are richer than you. Because when you look up at them, you don't have what they have you start feeling actually that the, uh, the pain of a poverty. And she always was telling me, don't keep looking up for something that you cannot do. But this will give you headache and neck ache. You know when you keep doing this? Keep looking down to mix with the people. This was the advice of my mother. Uh, the second um, support came to me uh, from my wife. That's why I told you yesterday, you have to choose the one who can support you and make you a superstar. So Allah made the choice for me to marry my wife. Because my mother has seen a dream that uh, my father-in-law gave my mother an apple. Give me the apple. This is my wife. He came in the dream and gave my mother an apple. Apple at that time in Egypt was very expensive. The kilo was three pounds. My salary when I was qualified was 17 pounds. So my salary can buy five kilos of apple. And my mother interpreted the dream that one of us will marry one of the daughters of uh, 
Yusuf Beck, but he was originally Turkish. My father, my brother, was having a love story to the left hand side of the house. My love story was to the right hand side of my house, and he did not marry uh, one of the daughters, but I married the one who became the apple. So my wife nickname is an apple. Okay. <laughs> There was the second one to support me. If you think that you can do it alone, you might be mistaken. You need a support in the stable house. Very rare, very rare. And in exceptional cases, you can do it alone. The greatest support that Muhammad was was Khadija. From day one, she took him by the hand to her nephew or her cousin, Awarak ibn Nawfal, to tell him, this is the revelation from Allah. To comfort him, to spend her money, to spend her effort on him. From day one, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ was a cornerstone in establishing the da'wah of Islam. This is a support came to me from uh, my wife and my family. Point number four, in your view, what are the pressing issues in the world? The pressing, effort, uh, the pressing issues in the world, it keeps changing. But for the last 20 years, it became very clear that the pressing issue of the world is injustice. We are living in an unjust world, in a world that is manipulated or manipulated by a group, handful of countries, to force a new culture that you don't want, values that you don't believe in it, and behavior that you don't accept. And if you are not following their track, they call you extremist, radicalist, and terrorist. And this pressing issue is the same issue which was facing the prophets before that. Because every prophet should be considered as a social worker trying to raise the public awareness to fight corruption and fight injustice in this society. Prophet Musa was being mentioned in the Quran more than any other prophet. After crossing, after crossing the sea, Allah asked him to help strike the sea and 12 passages Twelve roads were made for the tribes of Israel, of the children of Israel. They went to the other side of the sea. You know what? They found some people are worshipping idols. And told Sayyidina Musa, Oh Musa, why don't you make gods for us like those gods? Musa was oh, pointing his head with Harun. Then he left them to go and meet Allah in Mount Sinai. In Sinai. And the Lord told Allah, told him, Why you run the rush coming to see me? He said, Because I want to see you. Go back to your people. That's what they've been doing. He went back to find his people are worshipping the golden calf. And he was fighting with his brother, Harun. He said, Musa, I was trying to compose and to maintain the relationship between me and the children of Israel. Said, okay. Then he cursed them and they were lost in Sinai for 40 years. Okay? When you look at this, number four, the most depressing point now is the unjust world led by the few who are corrupt and they are corrupting everything on earth. Number five, what are the main challenges facing Muslims in general? Islamophobia, extremism, radicalism, and terrorism. And that's why when one of the newly developed think tank called Thomson Reuters, there are millions of people on their list. Most of them are Muslims, and they put on a terrorist list without knowing. Because this organization, when they see a government 
maybe a corrupt government, blacklisting you, or an article came about you in different newspapers, they will put you on the list without thinking. This kind of listing, the challenge facing the Muslims is a money transfer, as we talked about it yesterday. And the bank authority to stop or to close your bank account. So Islamophobia now is the pressing challenge on every Muslim living in Iran. What are some of the key issues that you youth need to get involved in? Youth must understand that if they don't learn, they don't gain experience, they can be nothing. Must understand that social media is good, but don't make the world a social media. Use social media to expand your ideology, expand your thoughts, expand your message, but don't be used by social media. So you just have to understand that making money and becoming rich is something which is not easy. If you want to become a thief, if you want to become a a bad guy, a bad politician, you can make money a lot, a lot of money. But if you want to be an honest man or woman, build your career, build your credibility and integrity, it takes years, actually. And you might not make money. Okay? So, for the youth, don't just say that I need to become a movie star to make money, or I want to become a football player to make money. Because even all the football players, like Pelé, the late Pelé, was a superstar of Brazil, did not have shoes to wear. Even Cristiano Ronaldo could not be afforded to buy the training shoes. But he has to do, to go through this difficulty and this agony to become Pelé, and to become, uh, what do you call it, uh, Christian Ronaldo. Even Muhammad Salah, Mo Salah, mm. he came from the country side of Egypt mm. as a second class player, but, and he was put on the substitute, as a substitute, I think in Arsenal or something, Chelsea. You know, uh, Chelsea, for how many years? Till Liverpool bought him, and he became superstar. So the journey from Cairo, to, to, to Italy, to London, <coughs> to Liverpool, took, it took, might have taken 10 years at least. Yeah. At least. He came in Switzerland too. He was yeah. a league at Basel. Ah, he played. Anyway, I, I'm sorry, I'm Switzerland. So, <laughs> next Switzerland. <laughs> Started here. Yeah. So, nothing is for free and nothing is easy. If you want, to become a scientist, you have to go through the system. If you want to become a superstar football player, you have to go to the, to the system. Athlete, you have to go to the system. And so on. This is for the youth. What advice would you have for our youth who aspire to be leaders of this Ummah? As I said yesterday, you have to work like a donkey. Start at the stage of donkey shape for about 20 years or more, from the age of 15 to the age of 35, 40. And from there, with the, your experience and knowledge, so be, don't rush. But if you want to make a change, you have to have the quality and the qualification which enable you to make the change. You cannot make a change without uh, having knowledge unless you're going to destroy the world, to kill people. It doesn't take much to destroy a building or to kill people, but it takes too much to develop community and to empower people. 
So this is the advice. Keep learning. Not because you have your PhD or master or doctor of medicine or others. I am. You are not. Because you learn one point. There's hundreds of points. You got your PhD in one point. But then out of this point, there's many, many points which you have no knowledge of. So keep learning all the time. Keep learning all the time. This is for the first... Anything else? This is for the first presentation for this morning. Is Seed of Leadership Retreat. Any question from you? Um, so for the last question, what advice uh, to be leaders? What kind of uh, mistake should we avoid as young people that want to be leaders? Like, sometimes you think because you succeeded in achieving something, you are a leader. Success is a step forward towards leadership creation. Failure could be another success story of becoming a leader. Because if we fail and we learn why we fail, we can jump high to the second stage. So don't ever think because you won the match against Manchester City that you will get the league championship. The championship league. Or because you have got your championship league in your country, you have got the European Championship League or the World Cup. So every stage has its own criteria and its own path. Don't think that because you scored three goals in one match, you keep scoring at every match. You have to keep shooting or kicking the ball many times then it hit the net. Success could be deceiving. When you say, yes, you have done it. No, you have not done it. Because after success, you go up. Keep going up. You become the best player of the team. Then you become the best player in the country. Then you have the best player in Europe. Then the best player in the whole world, then for one year. So how about next year? If you don't maintain what made you the best player of the year last year, you cannot become the best player year of next year. Keep going on. And in the humanitarian sector, what is the most dangerous thing to think? It is to love your ego. And love your logo. Because the logo and the ego blind you, make you blind. Because you only see the logo which gets you the ego. Because the glare or the light coming from the ego and the logo is blinding. Blinding you. You cannot see anything else. Look at the mirror, you see yourself. You should look at the mirror. You see the whole world, or see the community, or see the needy. You look at the mirror to say, I am the one, the Karun. I have been doing this because of my own knowledge. But who gave you the knowledge? Who gave you the brain to think, the eye to see, the ears to hear, the, the mouth or the tongue to speak? Not you. Who gave you from a dirty water? From a sperm and ovum, and put you in this shell or in this uh, place, protected for nine months. It's not you. Remember your time, Karun, when you were a little kid, just born yesterday. Do you have the knowledge? No. Do you have the science? Do you have the technology? No. 
So when you say that I have done it, who are you? You have been done before you do it. So go to the peer, to the one who made you and refer everything to him. That's why Khasaf Nabi of the Allah split the earth, swallowed Harun and swallowed the pleasure of Harun and swallowed the people of uh, uh, sorry, Harun, not Harun, not Harun, Harun, not Harun. Right? Yes. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, maintaining the, uh, the spirit while okay. in humanitarian suffering. Sometimes, maintaining the spirit? Sometimes it is difficult when we witness all the famine, the floods, and uh, we work so hard to do whatever we can to make a change. But then, as this process goes on, more famine happens, more floods, and then you start questioning whether your input is enough, whether what you're doing is enough. How do we keep that balance in terms your of... Your input never going to be enough. The input of all the prophets, prophets never was enough. And they are the prophets, a messenger of Allah. It's not your business to look after everything. It's business, your business, is to look after what you made, be made responsible for. If you've been appointed to become a teacher in a school and you teach three classes, mathematics, in the three classes, 200 young, young children, your responsibility is the 200, not the 1,000 children in the school. If you have married and you have got 10 kids or 5 kids, your responsibility is to look after your wife and after your kids first, before looking after the community and before looking after others. So, your responsibility, if you want to maintain your spirit, you have to focus on the idea. I had another talk called uh, Civilization is an idea. Civilization is an idea. Or from the initiative to the civilization. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you are creating an organization for what? What is the cause? The cause is maybe to help the orphans or to help the widows, the widows or to make education program or to raise the awareness or to build clinics and hospitals whatever it is and you succeeded you keep if you want to maintain this virtue you always keep focusing on the idea not on the one who started. If you keep thinking about, oh, he is the founder. <coughs> so what? Many founders before him. Many founders after. But what was the idea? The idea is to save those people. The idea is to do this program. Because the more you focus on the idea, the more, as we said before, that you will develop the idea. But I was said earlier on that the idea is like a structure. And instead of become one building, one, one floor, go to one story. Building. Yes. You said before that uh, if you have a family, you should focus on your family, make sure that everything is done with them, and focus. then focus on the community. But how do you keep balance when sometimes, for example, this if we are humanitarian, so at some point maybe this balance will be not balanced. So how do you keep how do you keep uh, unity? Yes, you said the wife, of course it's really important, but how you keep this unity, this thing also for the children, so they know that it's where it is. That's it. Well, we mentioned this yesterday. It's up to you. To choose the wife which will take you by the hand or support you in your presence or in absence. It's up to you. Because keeping the family together is a responsibility. If you have a wife who all the time do not become responsible for the children, you will never be achieving anything. Because she always wants to go out. Okay. But if you choose a wife that she protects the kingdom of the family, 
to keep you creating another kingdom outside the family, you will succeed. She will take the responsibility at home and you will take the responsibility in the community. That's why you have to get the right partner for yourself from day one. You don't need to much. Yeah, she could be a beautiful girl from a good family and can maintain the house. You don't have to say that I no, it's, I don't need to marry somebody else. It's your criteria. You might have a choice of marrying this lady or this lady. Choose the one who will help you to build the community. Yes. Um, you were talking about the uh, criteria, but Alhamdulillah, Allah guided you to build all of us. You guide all of us. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, in, in, in that case, is, is Allah it, it, blessing that uh, of course. led you to your... To your well, what we said yesterday that, that there's, there's an element of barakah. If Allah looks at your heart as Ahmed, <coughs> and find that you are sincere, or Elir, or Asr, Hassan, He will give you the barakah. It's up to you to fight your own ego. وَنَفْسُنَا مَا سَوَاهَا أَلْهَمَا فُجْرَاهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا You, your nafs, you have to keep changing it. Be charged with it and shave it. Because she will be guided either with bad things or with good things. Because the two parts are there. لَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَاهَا The one who will become victorious is the one who is purifying his or her soul. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَ To come back to you. When Allah SWT sees this internal fight inside you, then you manage to control your soul and your ego, definitely you'll be far more better than the companion of the Prophet It's up to you. You do the right choice for the wife, you do the right choice for the mission, you fight your soul, Allah will bring Baraka to your table. Well, this was the first session. Do you want to take five minutes only? Break to start the second session? Or carry on? Just five minutes. Just five minutes only. Five minutes. Five minutes. We'll come back to you in five minutes.